Okay. So as you're working, it's a good idea to just have objects off to the side that you can come back to later. So let's go ahead and continue building up our low poly game resolution mesh. So how much detail you add depends on you. And there are various tips and tricks you can use to reduce the amount of polygon, to reduce the triangle count. Remember that once you export your model to your game engine, all, the, all your quads will turn into triangles. But really what game engines look at is not the triangle count, but really the amount of vertices you have. That's what's really important, the amount of vertices. So what you can do, for example, to reduce poly count even further, you can go ahead and weld these points right here. And since this is the bottom, and it's less important than the top, which is what you'll be usually looking at, you can go ahead and use this technique to further reduce the amount of polygons here. So that's a great way to reduce polygons. I'll go ahead and do that later. For now, let's just go ahead and build it up normally. And then I'll show you guys some tips and trick and tips and techniques we can use to further reduce the poly count. So what I'm gonna do is uh I think I'll go ahead and add a slight some more geometry here to define this this cloth. So I'll go ahead and have a layer here, a row of polygons here, just to define this area where the cloth goes here. Okay, and I'm still moving up, and so even though there's a uh, an indentation here, that will be covered by the normal map. So we don't have to we don't have to put any extra detail here unless you would like to, unless you you think you have the the space, the room for it, and it will not push the triangle count over the top. At this point, you can maybe activate some Turbo Smooth so you can have a better idea of what the high poly mesh will look like. And you can perhaps also make this part transparent to give you a better idea of where your edges need to be. Okay, so here we need to take some time and put in a little bit of effort here because I've got some details happening here. So, as you can see, I have an indentation here, and I definitely want to go ahead and add some geometry here because there are some parts you can leave to the normal map, and there are some parts that you need to, you should add some geometry. For example, these grooves, these ind indentations here in the middle, you can leave that to the normal map these you can leave to a normal map but perhaps these in the middle and these to the side perhaps you should um, create those yourself so I'll go ahead and do that so what I'll do is I can go ahead and 
start using some symmetry to speed up the workflow so I only have to do it on one side and I can simply symmetrify it so I'll go ahead and start with this side I'll go ahead and isolate that and begin working on this part and I can even have X and Y symmetry so I only need to work on this left side symmetrify Y axis then symmetrify the X axis and let's see I'll go ahead and delete these polygons and now switch to my freeform on surface pick this surface offset 0.1 and step build and now I can build some geometry here okay so I'll just go ahead and build up this area focusing on using only the amount of geometry that's needed and not going overboard Okay, so something like this, and then let's go ahead and add this geometry here. And I'm going to go ahead and refine it using the planar tools, planar X and planar Y right here okay now it's time for me to also build some geometry for the middle part I can go ahead and turn off symmetry for the other side at this point so I can only work with this part right now okay so I'll go ahead and switch the object from object 05 I'll click here and select this object now and now let's change to object 03 and continue building some geometry here carefully following the curves and I can go ahead and bridge these areas together and then cap this area a good idea is just to cap the area and then you can go back and modify it later optimize it later the name of the game here is optimization okay so I've pretty much built this area in the middle now let me go ahead and isolate it and just connect these areas together so I'm just trying to figure out what exactly I have to do this can be a little bit confusing sometimes now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these edges here I'm going to go ahead and bring them out here in the middle close this area here do a little bit of welding here the 
So the goal right now is to seal up this hole. I've already gone and applied two symmetry modifiers. Once again, always use symmetry to make your lives easier. Just like that. So let's go ahead and focus on sealing up this hole and optimizing our mesh. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take these edges, move them towards the center, planar X, and then right click to make it zero. And see for example all of this geometry here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the color because the red is interfering with my selection right now. So I'll just go ahead and change it to something blue. That way I can clearly see the red selection. So all this geometry here is really unnecessary. So we've got to go ahead and cut down on it. And that's where you use your welding tools. And once again, oh, this geometry here is also unnecessary. So we're going to want to go ahead and weld that as well. And we're, we'll go, we're going to want to go ahead and weld and connect these areas as well. And perhaps this geometry right here, you might also want to go ahead and remove that as well. It might not really be necessary. So let me go ahead and see what's happening here. If you want, you can add another loop going here. Just carefully adjusting your geometry to match closely. And removing any unnecessary geometry. So right now it's looking pretty decent here. I'm just checking this area over to see if there's any places that I can eliminate some geometry. You know, perhaps I can eliminate these edges. They might not really be necessary. Like that. And then perhaps you can weld these edges. Just removing as much unnecessary geometry that you really don't need. What you should be focusing on is the silhouette. That's your number one focus. You want to make sure that you have a good silhou silhouette. So you want to make sure you capture all the important shapes and details. So right now we have 720 triangles. And once again remember you can add a subdivide modifier and increase the size parameter here to see what your model looks like once it's been triangulated. So this is what your model will actually look like once it's exported to the engine. So this is before and this is after. It's a very handy modifier. Okay, so 
Now let me just go ahead and cap. I'll go ahead and copy these symmetry modifiers so I can quickly reapply them later if need be. But for now I'll just go ahead and cap the bottom. And this is what it, this is what it will look like once it's been subdivided or once it's been triangulated. So so far we have 750 triangles in our low poly game resolution mesh or 377 vertices. Let's go ahead and get started on the other sections. Okay, so let's have a little bit let's have a little bit of a talk about this top part. Now, earlier I told you guys that you might have to change the design, the geometry, so you can have a better result when you're normal mapping. So as you can see, this part right here that holds the middle, there's lots of details here, and there's going to be a normal map will probably not be able to capture this detail well. If I want to capture the detail well, I'll need some actual geometry here. But that might be too much. See, I have lots of little details here that might not really be necessary. So I might have to go with a simpler option. And that's why you should always keep multiple versions of your objects around. You can see this right here is a very early version before I added any you know any of those details. Let me go ahead and just isolate these objects. So you can see the difference between this object which is a lot more complex and this simple object. I might have to go with this object. It subdivides well and I don't need to add that much extra geometry. So it's always good to have multiple versions of every object that you can quickly swap in and out if need be. So I'm going to go ahead and swap this out. So you should be very flexible when you're modeling and never be afraid to quickly swap out parts. And since I'm working in a planar fashion and since my object is in the middle of the scene that means I can easily clone this and move it towards the center and it's right where it needs to be at zero on the x-axis and the same goes for this little turn handle you can see that since it's got these handles, you're going to need a lot of geometry to capture all of this, the silhouette of this. We can't simply use, we cannot simply use a simple cylinder to capture this. We'll have to actually put the geometry here, or we might have to go with a much simpler model like this one. That will need, that will require a lot less geometry. So once again, I'll go ahead and swap it out. And this will give me a good example to show off the third method of getting a low poly mesh. So the first method is using the freeform tools, the step build tool, to build on top of it. The second method is putting the basic objects here, like I created, started with a cylinder, and just build up that cylinder. And then the third method is to take the high poly object, clone it, apply that blue material to differentiate the low poly from the high poly, and now simply optimize the high poly until we get a low poly mesh.